you can go for control l shivani yeah that's i tried that for some reason not working i'll try it again okay okay there we go great can you see my screen yes, yes. okay uh first of all i once again like to thank all of you for having us here um raju sir thank you for attending thank you for being here and it's a great opportunity to connect with people who are at least keen on listening to stories like this um especially in the social space you don't get a lot of people willing to listen um but yeah uh, shreni samudaya was set up in 2018 2017 and we actually started with the goal of sustainable livelihoods for all unorganized sector communities so we were started right here um, in jayanagar in bangalore where uh, mr sudhir kamath who's our um, founder and managing trustee he had interacted with a couple of unorganized occupational groups in bangalore um he of course started with um people like plumbers uh, carpenters electricians fashion designers chefs um in small scale restaurants uh, tailors and um, these groups that were accessible in urban bangalore so to speak and then on one of his trips um driving in and around bangalore he saw a weaving cluster at um, gotti gere i think which is weavers colony in bangalore and um he was of course fascinated by how there could be a handloom weaving cluster in bangalore and absolutely no one would know about it so he was quite fascinated with the concept of an entire community um hidden away in um busy bangalore and from there of course we got speaking to um the weaving community and we have now grown to our largest community we have um access to like the this slide says more than 9500 members online and offline out of which roughly 80% um are either weavers themselves or um they are a part of the weaving sort of supply chain so when we say uh, the weaving community it's not just limited to people who are weaving on a loom um, there's a lot of processes that go behind um pr- the production of fabric or the production of a sari or any sort of weaving so right from the people who pick um your silk or cotton right from the processing of the fabric of the very yarn uh then comes dyeing then you have to wait for the dye to set there's a lot of processes like bobbin winding warping i mean it's all technical i won't bore you with the details um but safe to say that there's not just one person making a sari a sari passes through many hands before it reaches you and um, those those hands are the people that we're trying to help and uh, the people that we're trying to work with and so far we've been fairly successful in working with um, at least some major parts of the supply chain like weavers of course but also um, like for example at our kodiala unit which i'll explain in a bit we also have women who want to work so we uh, we welcome them we teach them say uh, if i i'm sorry i'm not a kanadiga but i will try to say this right um ketcha kelsa which is the tasseling part of a sari uh, so it's it's all of those things that we try to do just to make sure that we can extend the promise of a sustainable livelihood to as big a community as we can even within um the weaving clusters that we work with so uh yeah these are basically what we look at and uh, these four areas are what we generally look at in terms of we try to establish community networks so for example currently we have whatsapp groups we have about 15 16 whatsapp groups of weavers from all across um not just karnataka in fact also um a couple of people in andhra telangana a couple of people in kerala tamil nadu um very very few i think two or three in gujarat as well and um, the purpose of our whatsapp groups is to give them a common space where they can share information they can share opportunities um a lot of people find employment um there because master weavers or weavers who own looms will ask for skilled weavers to come and weave with them um so that's uh, i think an important thing that we've seen in terms of information exchange goods and services exchanges and a lot of activity also in terms of recognition just recognizing that yes 
there are other weavers like me or better than me that i can either support encourage or even learn from um then of course we tie up with a lot of people to give them access to credit other financial products like insurance um we do upskilling and capacity building which is of course through our training programs as well but we've also done for example in the past photography workshops because a lot of the times when you ask weavers um for pictures of sarees they are going to send you something that is not going to be comprehensible at all um they'll probably just send you one side of the saree it won't even be in good light so we thought let's just make sure that that gap is fulfilled so that when they have to sell their sarees to someone else um they're in a better position to um sell basically and it's a stronger portfolio for them and then of course market access uh, in the pandemic we set up um, a commercial vehicle in llp because there were a lot of weavers who could not liquidate their stocks and they had i mean they still have thousands of sarees which they're just unable to sell because especially in the pandemic they weren't allowed to transport anything anywhere and now they have had to continue their production but that dead stock is still there so we've uploaded um a couple of the weavers goods on our website which i think anupriya if you can just put the link in the chat box that'd be helpful um so yeah that's something that we're also working on it's called shreeni.net it's literally just a website where we have put up um sarees from people who have approached us asking for help in liquidation so please uh buy viewers and artisans products from there um yeah now coming to kodiala itself just before um we really jump in a little bit of history also if i'm boring or uh, really droning on for 10 o'clock on a sunday morning please step in with questions this is not um, this is an open presentation i'm not going to uh, feel bad if you jump in with any questions or comments um so yeah a little bit about the history of kodiala um as uh, as i think suresh sir so kindly mentioned in that message um kodiala the cluster itself the reason that there is still a handloom unit that we have able we have been able to revive is because they have a very 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 old legacy of weaving i mean the wadayars the rulers invited the padmashali community which is the weaving community in kodiala um so the king invited the padmashali community to be the royal weavers basically so any fabric whether it be sarees um just running fabric or anything that has to be sent uh as gifts to anybody from the wadayar kingdom uh all of that fabric was commissioned only from kodiala uh originally the padmashali community was based in um, andhra pradesh which i mean technically modern day telangana and from there they migrated to kodiala which is um, close to the mandya district almost i think two and a half hours away from bangalore on the mysore road and um, that's how the padmashali community settled down at the request of the royal family and since then it has been a generational um not just livelihood but also a form of art for example if you go to a lot of so there is an old house in kodiala where um, there's a very old grandmother who we had the chance to meet and she took us through her house it's a huge house and there's a um, as soon as you enter it's like a roofed yard where she explained that the reason that this place is so big is because we used to have looms here and people would weave here and uh, she took us inside to her house and there were these um, tanjore paintings with real gold work and um, absolutely beautifully preserved each of them had um, a story behind it of course but what was interesting to us and what we saw immediately that caught our eye um is that the kind of motifs that were in the tanjore paintings that were done god knows how long ago those same motifs we could we could see in the sarees that the weavers were weaving so these are motifs that are carried on through years and generations and they each of the motif has um a specific value a specific history attached to it i think that was an extremely fascinating part of the visit where it opened our eyes to how long weaving has been a very respected um uh, a very revered profession 
but of course what we saw in terms of the modern day situation of that cluster nobody was really weaving on the handloom it was too expensive um people didn't pay a fair wage there were too many um just push and pull factors that uh, took them away from handloom weaving and towards the motorized handloom which is like a power loom now usually when we say power loom people think of these giant um, mill setups but let me uh, allay that suspicion that's not the case uh, when we say power loom it's basically something like you see here but this is a handloom but um, a power loom is basically just a motor fitted somewhere here which is the standard um set that a majority of the weavers are using currently uh, it's just a motorized handloom but what you can see on this slide is a pure power loom like everything is done very much by hand so what we um uh came to a conclusion to after uh, talking to the entire community after talking to very very senior weavers um in the community and around uh we decided that uh, it's not like people don't want to weave on the handloom it's just that they don't have the means to so then we set up um the kodiala handloom revival and training unit and uh since then of course it, it was one unit now it's grown to two where we try to like i'm i'm not going to repeat the words on the screen uh it's basically a unit that we set up to make sure that the generational practice of um handloom weaving is somewhere brought back and um that's something that we were very adamant on doing simply because we knew that the skill set is there right there are senior weavers from the community who want to weave it's just that we had to pitch in to set up the looms um and to provide them raw materials and a sustainable wage we they just wanted fair returns on labor which is sad but i think it's that was um yeah it, it was quite heartbreaking in that uh, in today's world where we do have all of this diversity all that's missing from uh, generational dreams being realized is a little bit of funding so luckily we were able to get a grant from a uh, partial grant from nabard for our training project so there were women in the community who again they have been in weaving families they've been a part of other aspects of the weaving process but uh, they were never allowed to weave themselves or uh, even if they were they didn't have the skills to weave themselves so that's where we stepped in we set up a community based uh, training program where somebody very much from that community who was a master weaver uh, he stepped up and he taught our women how to weave and today they're weaving gorgeous sarees which i um i mean we're personally very proud of it's a very emotional moment for us uh, to see our chinese who started off with weaving just plain fabric with a lot of mistakes um handloom weaving is not a precision art uh, there are differences uh, in different areas of the same fabric but today um, when they weave amazing sarees with temple borders and stripes in the pallu um yeah it's just it is a very emotional moment for us uh, specifically at kodiala um again like these are the three main aims a sustainable livelihood sustainable production we've also set up a natural dyeing unit there because eventually we do want to experiment with moving away um from chemical dyes uh, there's been enough and more research i won't get into that again objectively chemical dyes not that great for the environment so we want to switch to natural dyeing in the long run and we've just we just in fact just last year uh finished setting up the unit uh and it's a really fascinating process i mean you have to boil the ingredients um there's i mean one of my favorite colors in the natural dyeing uh, palette comes from marigolds which is a beautiful like yellow orange color um but yeah if anybody ever wants to take a look at how natural dyeing is done please do this is an open invitation please don't feel shy um and that's where the sustainable production piece comes from is that somewhere we hope to take it to um, a very circular sustainable safe um economy where we're not relying on very damaging products or processes to um come up with our production so even at like for example at the unit also we use only um natural fibers so we use cotton and silk um and yeah the sustainable dyes of course natural dyeing is not going to harm uh, anything because even to fix the dye to our yarn we use alum which is i think 
copper sulfate or aluminum sulfate i'm not i left um, science after 10th standard now going to get into that um women's empowerment is of course a direct uh, a direct impact from our training project uh, where it's just the fact that these women have been a part of weaving communities they have seen weaving in front of their eyes we just wanted to give them a platform to learn and become weavers themselves and yeah just a couple of pictures uh these are of course um in the second picture that's uma bharti ma'am from nabard um who interacted with the employees and uh, of course the trainees themselves are weaving on the loom um yeah this is just something that we've planned as like the forecast just to let you guys in uh, and give you a little bit of an idea we do want to include more women in all of the processes so for now we've achieved um two batches of training for women in just weaving now we also want to see how we can involve them in natural dyeing and all the allied processes um financial inclusion and empowerment of course we've tied up with people like say for example laksha um they're a fintech startup in bangalore and they provided um stuff like uh, insurance products from aditya birla and beyond other people like hespl and game we work with them to see what all we can do for them so even giving them access to mudra loans gold loans a lot of um just basically products that they would not they might not have had access to or not known about um and then at kodiala one interesting project that we want to also hopefully kick off the ground very very soon is that we want to invite weavers from other clusters that are close by because we noticed that a lot of these clusters like their history somewhere are interlinked so we wanted to invite different weavers to come and weave with us um take care of their stay their wages everything just to see what kind of interesting design po cross pollination happens um so that's something that we're working on currently of course with um the latest wave of covid it did push things back but we're hoping that now that things are settling down we can take that up again and um we're also settling um our weavers into a rhythm where they can contribute their aspects of their community to our production system so hopefully that's something that um they feel free in sharing i'm sorry i'm just going to have a sip of my tea ha oh, okay um now moving on we're also um setting up a spoke model at indovalu which is again a close um a village very close to kodiala so what this hub and spoke means in the development world or in the social sector jargon is basically that there's a one major hub which is kodiala for us where um most of the flurry of activity is happening and then we set up a spoke which is a similar model but it's in a different location it will still be overseen by us the processes are still very much um close to what we're doing it's just that it's in a different place now at indovalu it gets even more interesting because while the padmashali community is a very protected caste community um the indovalu women are scsc women who by themselves came up to us and said you know what we want to learn and we only have three looms and we need more because we're a bigger group i mean it was it was so refreshing and as a woman i felt um overjoyed to hear that these group of marginalized women because let's face it they were marginalized these group of women are able to come to us and say ki you know what i want my own livelihood and this is what i want to learn so set up um something for us and that's in fact what we're trying to pitch to various places now if we can get the funds together um to set up that unit to make sure that we have raw material make sure that we have a trainer already but to make sure that we can pay them also a fair wage and that the trainees get a certain stipend we don't want it to be another um, as uh, the corporate sector loves to say another unpaid internship we don't want it to be that so um, yeah currently we're working on the funding hopefully it comes through if anybody listening has any connections to get get us funding for the indovalu women please do get in touch um yeah i mean that's something that we're looking at currently immediately doing which is an extension of not just the model of kodiala i think but also 
uh, as an anthropology student, when I researched um, Kodiala and I looked into and I spoke to uh, the people there, it also led me to understand that for a lot of these processes, women are at the forefront. It's just that when it comes to weaving, the actual act of weaving, um, weaving is not a, a physically easy thing to do. It's, it's a very taxing process. You have to physically pick up a frame uh, on the loom and you have to pull uh, the beater, which is how you get those um, closed weaves. It's a physically taxing process. And that's why I think um, it was uh, kept from women for all these years. I'm not saying that there aren't women weavers. There are, and you'll notice this, especially in the Northeast, where a large part of the workforce in the weaving community is women. But in Karnataka, we saw that they were around. They knew the processes. They know how it works roughly. But um, uh, one of the... I think I have, yeah, okay, I'll just skip to that slide. Sridhar Sir is, of course, our unit head. He's a master weaver himself, and uh, he helps us take care of the unit. He weaves himself. He gives a lot of the designs and color combinations. Um, but this is Soumya, who's one of our trainee weavers, and she's still weaving. Um, it was really heartening for us when, so Soumya is the first trainee to start weaving temple border sarees. And um, the first sari that she finished, which was just, I think, two, three weeks ago, the first thing that she did is just, she just held up like the border and she took a picture of herself with the sari that she wore. And um, yeah, that was, that was a special moment for all of us. I wish um, we had more pictures of the trainees with their saris, but um, that, was, that was quite special. And um, she's reached this stage now after almost like it says a year and a half, wherein earlier she just started with three months of, um, I cannot explain splicing. It is, uh, it's like joining the fibers of the yarn on the loom uh, so that weavers can, weave. it's a whole thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just little moments like these that give us hope that, you know, we're doing the right thing somewhere. Um, another, uh, I'm just going to, I mean, I think I was spoken for way too long. Um, I'm going to quickly just touch upon this sort of project that we're doing, which is the Shani community platform. Um, I said a while ago that we're working on, currently we're operating on WhatsApp groups. I'm sorry, one second. And what we want to do is, um, build a shared space where weavers can exchange a whole bunch of things like of course i mentioned earlier but also where we can reach them to give them access about information on um, schemes that the government has other ngos that collaborate with us like an hespl like a game or even fintech startups like a laksha um, to just be able to reach them and give them information that's why we're building a tech platform a lot of we realize that a lot of weavers from our um, and artisans. I mean, we also work with Mysore Inlay artisans, Shanna Patna toy makers. A lot of these uh, communities, they are also using our WhatsApp groups to gain business intelligence or market intelligence, design intelligence. Um, a lot of people find it uh, the best place to gain inter uh, recognition by interacting with people and sharing their domain knowledge. And of course, a lot of people uh, are able to clear their dead stocks on the group itself. I mean, we have people who say, okay, okay, you know what, if you have this dead stock, let me take it off your hands. Um, sometimes we step in and we're like, okay, you have a lot of dead stock. Even if you can liquidate some of it, we're willing to take the rest of it and you know, you can rest easy. Um, so currently, I mean, we've already started, the wireframes are already in place, you'll see it in a bit. The first phase, phase second, sorry, phase two of our data collection is complete. Uh, we already know what kind of things our, our um, artisans and weavers want to see. And uh, we're now starting. Um, up uh, In the testing phase, we're also involving our weavers because essentially this is made for them. It's not going to be us just chatting on an app. It's going to be very specifically targeted to the weavers and for the weavers. So we, it, it, it's only fair that it, it also should be by the weavers. And um, 
that's what we're doing right now, showing different features of the app to um, different viewers that we've interacted with so far, getting their insight on, okay, is this useful to you? Are we literally just talking nonsense right now? Just tell us straight up. And sometimes they do, and that's refreshing to hear. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. This is just a couple of very, very rough, um, I mean, there's no colors, just uh, just what our wireframes are going to look like eventually. And um, through our platform, we have the story of Karapan sir, who is like this says, uh, we were from Tamil Nadu now, this guy has invented different kinds of looms. I mean, he is, he is big, big, big leagues. But on um, the Shrini group, we found that he's giving people so much mentorship, so much information. Um, in turn, he's getting the recognition of being an extremely senior weaver. And a lot of weavers ask him if they can just come to his unit for a couple of weeks to just learn. They don't do anything. They just go there and learn. And um, yeah, this guy is, uh, I mean, he's extremely senior to us, but he will talk to you as if he wants to tell you things about his life and what he's done and how he weaves and all of the different interventions that he's done. Uh, so our platform also provided that space for people to approach him because otherwise he's a very senior weaver. It's not easy to just um, walk up to his door and be like, hello, excuse me. Um, so, I mean, it does go both ways. He's also been able to reach a lot of the younger weavers who have been getting jaded because the weaving industry is not the most supportive at all times. But through Karapan, sir, they were able to realize that there is a there is an end goal. There is a good space, even in all of this. And um, yeah, that's what our tech platform is mainly targeted towards. And again, we're raising funds for that as well. So if anybody wants to pitch in, please feel free. Um, again, I'm just going to let you do that because a lot of the people, especially in the pandemic, that was a dark time because um, a lot of people lost their jobs. And luckily, through our groups, we were able to restart. I mean, we were able to uh, source all lots of yarn that people want to give away, give it to people who want to weave. We were able to um, ask people who want to weave and connect them to people who needed uh, people to work with them. Um, it was a tough time. We, did, we also did a lot of fundraising for direct cash disbursements because a lot of viewers were getting stuck in a vicious debt cycle. But through our platforms, we were able to sort of give them um, connections, opportunities, standing, understanding, uh, immediate relief, all of that. And we are now uh, looking at taking, because WhatsApp has its limitations. There's, there's a lot of things that you can't do. For example, one group only has, say, 256 participants. We have 6,000 viewers. How, I mean, the math doesn't, it just doesn't work. So that's why we're building our own tech platform. Um, this is a couple of ways that you can work with us. I mean, we are always on the lookout for similar minded people, for even people who understand what we're trying to do. Uh, you can, of course, collaborate if you are an individual, you just want to help us by giving us your inputs. We're more than willing to listen. Um, if you know of people or uh, companies or even other NGOs that want to partner with us, designers who want to um, do like a design intervention production run thing at Kodiala, always welcome anything that you think will fit with us, we're always up for. Uh, donate, of course, we welcome uh, individual donations as well as we can absorb CSR funding. Uh, we apply a lot to um, the social impact grants. And of course, you can spread the word. Um, the, the most immediate way that you can help our viewers is by liquidating their stocks. So. Uh, we have a whole e-commerce website set up that I'm sure and I think Anupriya has put in the comments. Um, and that's a place where you can spread the word and tell people that this is an NGO setting up um, an entire e-commerce chain only to support weavers and artisans. So that's one of um, the best things that you could do. Maybe link us to um, gifting, like HR, corporate gifting, all of that. Uh, that would be really, really helpful from your side, I think. And that's about it. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, that's it from my side. I'd love to hear if anybody has any questions. Um,
that would be great sorry for i hope i didn't bore everybody to sleep um uh i think shivani uh, it was a brilliant presentation thank um, you so much thank you i don't you. know how many years you've been in this uh, ngo this training uh, some of the i have been here i will complete 2 years in approximately 10 days so but then you really years. got immersed into the whole thing it looks like the way you speak <laughs> thank you so much. you've been there with Uh, the Srini community for ages, so that's pretty <laughs> interesting. And uh, unlike many people who are stuck with PowerPoint presentations, yeah. you know you are uh, you have that skill, uh, <laughs> you have the flair for presentation. So Thank you. Thank text you. is not to be read, but text is just yeah, a support, yeah. a speaker support. Yeah, it's there And, if you want uh, to read it. You know it. it pretty well. Exactly. <laughs> very well done. So very well done. Um, very impressed. Um. Firstly, uh, my question relates to the academy part. Like, okay, you right. have been uh, trying to put together some kind of a center, a facilitation right. center for the weavers. Yes. Now, my question to you is: Has it taken any kind of a academy form in the sense? Have you been able to conduct workshops or design a course right. or put somebody you know who is absolutely a novice but willing to learn weaving from the village side as a livelihood part? Right. Can you skill them all the way up to No, oh, a very skillful trainer. Do you have an academy, or is the academy in in, in place, or is it a vision? Um, the academy, in the formal sense, uh, what what I think I'd like to preface this by is saying that we work with community led networks. Now, the academy in that sense is already there. There are master weavers who are willing to teach in that trajectory that you mentioned of taking somebody who knows absolutely nothing. Like when I said that the women are part of the weaving families, they may they probably never touched a loom, uh, and we had to start all the way from scratch in that sense. Um, and now today, for example, Soumya and Bhanumati and some of the other weavers, they are weaving sarees with temple borders and just whatever. And they, in fact, it was really heartening because. looking at other weavers and like they used to go home and do research ki okay what kind of sarees are selling what should we make what will be easy for us to do they used to get those designs show them to the to their trainer and be like hey can we do this and um, that the sort of academy model somewhere i think um it's not formalized can i say that yeah, it's, it's not, not formalized. formalized because Yeah, there is no of, such thing as a yeah. Exactly, these kind of guru shishya paramparas was were already here. That's right. They were yeah. already here. We but just but the point it. that I'm trying to make that point I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sorry to interrupt. Go you. ahead. No, no. Point no. I'm trying to make is this, like you know today's world, it's it's all about e-learning and you know connectivity. Right. YouTube is there. Any <laughs> anything that you would ever want to learn, you could always the YouTube is the guru today for many right. people, right? So, has there been any effort to capture these mentation programs? Mentors are doing their job. There used to be the old shishya parampara and all that. We fully understand that. But in order to uh, get scaling, and also to spread, and also to reach out to the communities in remote villages of India, okay, that would take a next step of just trying to institutionalize the whole mentorship. You know what I mean? So, this part of it is the academy, basically. right okay. so formalizing whatever is happening between two individuals the skilled skilled person and the non skilled person would yeah. take the you know shape of a institution where you know whatever yeah. he is teaching is captured whether it's in a video form or people like you you're quite articulate so you can put it put a syllabus for this and say okay this is the starting this is a starting module module number 2 3 4 <laughs> so by the time they complete yeah. the 10 modules they are skilled weavers You know what I mean? Right. So it might be. Yeah. The thing be, with weaving yeah, is also is that um, yeah, that is that kind of documentation is something that, in fact, Anupriya and I, uh, we're both working towards in terms of both Beautiful. video and um, just for even for us to understand, it's sort of shameful when right. we go to our own unit and we're like, oh, what are they doing? I don't want to ask that ever again. Um, right. But just having that documentation of okay, this is what's happening. Now, right. when this trainee will learn this, this is the level right. that they'll reach. so while all of exactly. that is sort of understood we are trying to yeah. document and we are trying to make sure that there is a process flow to it uh, right. just so that like you said it can be like a replicable model exactly like anybody exactly. should be able to come and as a trainer or as a trainee 
get access True. to the same kind of benefits of the process that we know works like this is a tried and tested um yeah sort yeah. of see the thing process. is yeah the thing is you are going to actually create the process of training and passing on the skill sets Correct. to the incoming generation of people so this is a major thing it's it's not an ordinary thing what i'm talking about oh, In, we have a model we are trying to do this uh, film for the benefit of students in academies yeah. business schools iits iims everywhere and uh, we are talking about a pyramid okay a pyramid structure and the bottom of the pyramid is building the villages themselves we are talking about rural Absolutely. india and trying to help out the communities in rural india 400 million people are not even getting 100 rupees per day 400 million people they they all yeah, have you know right. issues with two square meals so now we are starting with the bottom bottom of the pyramid which is building the villages we have tied up with the one mr elango who's a village model architect and he's been invited by countries like pakistan to give them uh, gyan wisdom yeah. about how to build mm -hmm. villages so mm -hmm. this person would lay the first layer and then the, there is something called a facilitation center we're talking about where all kinds of training can be given information can be distributed schemes are there worth about uh, 10000 crore 10 10 lakh That's crores amazing. every year is being distributed to village community which doesn't reach them so because they don't have the awareness of these things so we are trying to put a facilitation center on top which includes skilling as well so if you are trying to go on national level we would give you that platform that you need but we Absolutely. want everything to be sort of you know formalized right. ready to should be a plug in model right so we if shreni wants to come in onto that platform with its own plug in we'll be very glad to accommodate you oh, for but sure. that would require this kind of a, you know a formalized exactly mentorship. The process so has already started. Yeah. Uh, it's just that right now, I mean, this is the first batch of trainees that reached. Um, it's a long process. It's not going to happen right, in uh, three months, but um, it's really fascinating that this is the stage where they can, like the trainees can say, hey, you know what, I can be Vasari now, which means we're at close to the final stages. I mean, they still don't know how to be with like Dobbies and Jakars and that's a little bit um, comes somewhere down the line. But till here, definitely it's something that we're looking to capture and replicate. Like I said, it's a hub and spoke model. It's something that we want to make sure is replicable. So Kodiala exactly. was, of course, our pilot project. But right. now that we're also looking to step into Indavalu, it is very much something that we're doing in yes. terms of, okay, if not written down because the trainer is from the community, um, exactly. we have sat down and be like, okay, what's the kind of timeline that you're going to take? We know from right. Kodiala that this takes this much time. So how is it going right. to work here? What all will you need? And when all of those conversations are happening right now, it's just a question of sitting down and okay. documenting, which is, uh, correct. Correct. Amazing. Maybe I'll, I'll try and find out from, uh, our circle of friends and circle of uh, other NGOs, whether we can, you know, have those kinds of modules ready in order to help you just plug in your you know, so-called assets right. into various uh, units, training right, modules, absolutely. so that it becomes a training program. So we can work on that. That is number one. Regarding Channapatna, you are yes. talking about, where toy makers are there. We, you know, as children also, 50 years back, we were fascinated <laughs> by the toy maker. We used to go all the way to Channapatna to buy those toys. Okay. Now, what is the current situation? What is the status quo of those toy makers? Chennapatna, how you are helping them? Uh, the interesting thing about Chennapatna, and I'm pretty sure you know that there's like that Chennapatna craft park set up. Uh, the divide in Chennapatna is actually very interesting and somewhere also not that great because the big guys have had their factories scaled up and shifted to the CCB, which is the Chennapatna craft park. There are a lot of artisans who work independently, who have maybe like two, three people under them. They have uh, uh, just a shed the size of maybe this bed, like my bedroom, maybe sometimes even smaller. Um, those guys are the ones who are now struggling to sort of get that access to market. So for example, um, not that long ago, just I think late last year, we had a collaboration with um, a toy making company <clears throat> in Bangalore who wanted to work with the Chanapatna cluster. So they got them to do um, their different kinds of uh, oh my god, I'm forgetting the word. Yeah, prototyping. Green um, toy, yeah. Green toys, yeah. Green toys yeah. for prototyping with Chenna Patna. Um, now, we had an option of going to either the very big guys, 
which is a straight shot um they have plenty of business it's not like their uh, revenue models are being affected but the majority is that of the individual artisans who are right i mean they they do come together as a they're not organized community. they're not organized no, no, no. that's the fun part uh they have the idea of them being a cohesive whole but mm-hmm. when it comes to commerce or when it comes to orders uh they do it's it's every man for himself so for example when we collaborated with them we met uh, this artisan a uh, very senior uh, person called shrinivas ayya and shrinivas ayya sir had like this network of a lot of artisans and all of them came to meet us when we went for the prototyping discussion and out of that he allotted the work to one of them but that's when we already have inroads with them and we will like listen we know you you guys are a community so just come meet us i don't know how they would react to an individual going and saying ki oh i want x y z number of toys so it's a strange situation in chandpatna and uh, we we also did a cup a little bit of relief work there as well because the younger um, not the younger side the smaller scale artisans were affected adversely whereas people in the ccp did receive uh, some support uh, or financial aid from the government if i'm not wrong but the smaller guys didn't really get access to that um but throughout our interactions it's been very clear that there is a very clear sense of okay as a community of people who do the same thing we have to band together somewhere but i don't think i mean there again like shreeni long term wants to become a standards organization so i think in chandapatna there is a need to set that standard of just process again it comes down to okay how do you approach people um if you need more hands on deck how do you work with somebody in that community how does that collaboration so, work yeah sorry to interrupt you no, so no, the point ahead. is you have not yet penetrated to the extent that you have done in the viewers community is that correct um, when it comes to the penetrated i think would be the wrong I, we haven't collaborated with them as much we have okay. uh, i mean a lot of the times when we go to kodiyara i mean it, it's a work in progress can i say that it's a work in progress sorry yeah yeah sure the thing is it's a work in progress the thing is the weaving community uh, it's the second largest group in the informal sector it takes up most of our bandwidth right um, there's always um, i wouldn't say fire fighting but there's always things that crop up with the weaving community that take up a huge chunk of Um, resources yeah yes your resources are being taken up so this is a work in progress i would Absolutely. rather say that you know at this point of time your uh, attention is being drawn towards uh, yes. expanding the existing weaving community and solidifying and consolidating and all that Absolutely. so the the toy makers is in your focus I and mean, sometime you know it'll it'll just pop up and then you'll go really deep into it and see whether you can yeah, consolidate uh, those same pieces. with the mysore wooden lay and good carving artisans for example we get um, requests from lifestyle and e-commerce brands that want to set up uh, their own product range and they ask us to connect uh, them yeah. with the artisans because they don't want to deal with the artisans directly and we've okay. dealt with them for i mean however long and through our groups they've also somewhere understood that we are helping them somewhere to at least aggregate their voice um make sure that if there's any opportunity for commerce or recognition or funding we're at least relaying it to them so they they that trust building has taken us 3 4 years but we've gotten here um okay. with i i would say with the help of our communities right otherwise we would next be... question would be yeah uh, shivani next question would be the clusters right how many clusters you have and how many states and how many families in all you have been able to make an impact Oh god that's a huge number. Um let me break it down this way for you because the extent of the families impacted we won't be able to like for example i can tell you that correct okay directly with let's the go to the funds. clusters directly okay let's Haan, go to the clusters clusters is clusters is easier again how do you count clusters because we usually go district wise that's okay. easier for us and i think okay. that is i have that somewhere just a second um that data i have yeah so, right okay so all over uh, south india it's all over south india at this point yeah, including is, uh, maharashtra you said or gujarat gujarat me again we have one or two weavers in one small cluster what it what, mm. the way that it works is for example 27 districts 
ओवरऑल बट अ लॉर्ड ऑफ दम आर फोकस्ड इन कर्नाटका सो बिदर गुलबर्गा बागलकोट बेलगाम कोपल गदग बेलारी um then you come down so there's also clusters that we work with in chitradurga tumkur um hasan okay. mandya of course and that's obvious but right. even kolar so your Hassan. presence is there at this point of time your presence is there in south of india and yeah. also gujarat in the north right little yeah. bit yeah uh, to okay. be very Now, specific like 17 districts in karnataka 27 districts in total, in total. yeah and six states six states yes six states huh? okay <laughs> and can can you just tell me there is this thing called fab india right which is also trying to do pretty much what you're doing so how do you look at them are they your competitors or are they your uh, sort of you know brothers in arm uh, how, how do you take it um fab india would be i mean they definitely be people to look up to in that um the way that they've managed to showcase different as many different weaves as they could it's not again like uh fab india has um, they have also brought in carpentry shivani exactly anything exactly. together yeah a lot yeah. of i mean they they have some like, that furniture there. is a thing exactly um yeah. even for that matter cutlery um home living they managed to cover everything right. and while they are um beacons of light or whatever uh, to aspire to our model is more community based rather than um sort of highlighting their work we also want to make sure that first their lives are stable first they have enough money coming in they have sustainable livelihood so i think um that's Yours where is impact our, oriented impact yeah, oriented yeah we're more impact oriented of course the commerce part of it is a very big piece to make sure that their livelihoods are sustainable because we exactly. can't support them forever they have to make sure right. that they can scale on their own and that's where i right. think fab india has been the role model and the go to even people like soch even people like karagiri ethnic a lot of these guys yeah. have been the model to go to because they've managed to get scale going which is at the end of the day scale is the name of the game uh, you can't right. achieve anything without scale but do you at any point of time sorry uh, do you at any point of time uh, would like to collaborate with these because ultimately you know Oh, absolutely. It will result in the impact, right? So, has there been any thought process with Mr. Kasudev? Absolutely, Kasudir? absolutely. For example, um, we always look forward to making sure that we can plug in our viewers' livelihoods anywhere. So, for example, like Tanera, um, they had a small internal project that 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 they wanted to work with. So, we sourced. Uh, they wanted bags of some kind. So, we sourced um, fabric from the Gulet Gudda, I think, Khand cluster, which is the fabric they wanted. and then we gave it to our tailor clusters in bangalore and they made um those products whatever tanera wanted and uh, we have always been on the lookout for such collaborations because that's where a you're getting recognized by the big guys number one i mean at the very core that's what it is but also you're getting opportunities to make some hard value spring out of this network that you're building and therefore i would exactly. really love to collaborate with um, yeah. a fab india bangalore and do you know weaves of karnataka for a month straight exactly. that would be fantastic for us and our viewers because how many people know that khand is woven in gulet gudda right I, mean, i think that that's the point the point is to collaborate these exactly. are the days and when we're always open to collaborate we can't be in silos yeah silos yes, will not help no. us anymore and uh, of course you can you have your own role to play there is always a, a spectrum you know there's a huge band there's always it's and the wealth of the country is you know it's infinite correct, correct. so anybody who's going to actually try to create monetize this wealth out of it they will have to choose their uh, spectrum which part of the spectrum they're going to work on it's not that the fab india has the entire spectrum it is wrong to mm-hmm. think so and shreni will have its own portion to play its own correct. role to play so collaborations would be a great way to go forward and we actually want to connect these various things you know various players if they have any takeaways in terms of what they can hand over to the communities at large meaning our facilitation i told you the layer number 1 is building right. the villages of india right. the second is to facilitate them with the skilling and you know training programs capacity building that you spoke about various kinds of interventions that can happen knowledge wise because knowledge is something very crucial in skilling the people and letting them earn their dollars i mean earn their money 
Absolutely. So this is where I think you, your collaborations will go a long way. And my uh, last question before I hand over to the others who might be willing to ask you questions is about our access. We would like to actually come down to your places, some of the projects that you have, especially mm -hmm. those which are the uh, key centers. And uh, Raju is there uh, present <laughs> today, he's listening to us. Uh, a couple of our, my, our director, Purnima, is there. She's also listening yeah. to you and Manasa, the manager. Mm -hmm. So they will first come and sit with you and just to get a fair idea what 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 is it that you're doing so that then we can come back to the filmmakers and then work out exactly whether we can make a clip sure. on what you're doing your contribution to the world of viewers right and that can be showcased as part of the documentary film so we are looking for collaboration with you and my regards to uh, sudhirji sometime i'll get in touch with them there. yeah yeah no issues so we understand and thanks to anu and thanks to yourself you made this presentation quite uh, interesting and very Thank enlightening. You. Thank and you looking so forward to collaborate with you. Absolutely. And over to others for their questions. Thank you so much, Shivani. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. It's okay. You can ask Anybody me. else? Uh, yeah. Purnima, Deepa, would like to ask any questions? Uh, Deepa is doing a wonderful job uh, in uh, women empowerment, oh, uh, wow. including transgenders in Hyderabad, uh, big time. And uh, Great. She's making them, uh, yeah, create a lot of uh, jute, jute-based uh, product, uh, products. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, that's something that they're also looking. She at. can, she can, yeah, she can collaborate with you. She has several clusters in Telangana, Andhra oh, Pradesh, great. I think West Bengal. Deepa, would you like to just speak a few words, please? Uh, hi, hi, hello, everyone. I'm hi. just tied up here with some relatives and all, so I'm unable to show my face. Still, I want. I don't want to miss this session, so I just, you know, uh, made out some time and you know, listen to all the wonderful presentation done by you, Shivani. Thank you. Uh, first of all, congratulations, and uh, uh, you have invested a lot of your time, effort, and passion, uh, you know, uh, in the um, uh, development of nation. Believing in the you know, manpower is more important than any other business model. Uh, uh, India's huge resource is manpower. Later comes whether it's a toy making or a jute bag making or agri product, whatever. But you know, we have a lot of resources now, young resource. So uh, I, I really like the you know, uh, way you presented and the concept and that can help this. And I'll get in touch with you to know more about you. And yeah, so uh, I'm I'm a women entrepreneur in Hyderabad, and uh, I lead a women cooperative society, majorly into um, empowering marginalized community women, including transgender. Recently, we have associated with Telangana State uh, Women Development Child Welfare Department. Oh, wow. With their initiative, we have we could do one skill development program to youth. Uh, uh, products to transgenders and which is turning to consistent production center now Ex exclusively for them and so Suresh I just wanted to you know uh, bring it to your notice yeah. that yesterday uh, there yeah. is an interesting thing happened with uh, you know transgenders they came up that they want a professional dress code uh, as mm -hmm. they're you know, <laughs> which elevated my motivation to because you know uh, they are turning really yeah. good in the right direction now the textile, the textile department of Telangana, uh, mm -hmm. which usually focuses on ikat, the handloom material, is ready mm -hmm. to design a professional dress code for transgenders engaged in livelihood model. Wow. wow. <laughs> Kudos to you. you. You've been yeah. very active. You've been the voice yeah, for that. Is. Yeah, it is very yeah. interesting and attractive point to you know bring a small right. change in uh, the transgender. So, Wonderful. Um, we were actually were, you know, tied up with all that, so I really couldn't make out yesterday also. I missed the session, but I heard all that uh, recording which mm. you sent. It was yeah. very no issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think we, we need to bring... Hemendra ji is all about, uh, you know, high-tech stuff, uh, agri-tech and other things. And uh -huh. he's associated with a lot of startups. He's called the star, star mentor of India today. Mm -hmm. And he's also a venture capitalist. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's connected with... Uh, the entire ecosystem of startups in the nation. Mm -hmm. So having him on our side, uh, connecting all these platforms together, uh, it's like, you know, knitting the entire country together. Yes, so yes, it's yes, wonderful yes. that you, you people are there. Uh, yeah. There is training on one side, 
your uh, efforts going on on the other side we need to bring them onto a common platform that is the whole point there should be a cohesive uh, program available to anybody who would like to jump in and start from there including yeah. startups including people themselves the rural people on one side startups the industries the businesses everything everybody should be able to take their pie you know out of this huge pie that we will try to put together in front of the team that's the whole point wonderful deepa it's wonderful to uh, listen to your uh, successes one after the other in the last six months you have achieved quite thank a lot quite yeah. a lot you have done thank yeah. you so and we're also looking forward to uh, your presentation uh, deepa sometime you said uh, Quite soon, next week. Sir, because yeah because this one week 10 days uh, you know i'm tied up with the isb scholarship program which i got selected for which is ambassador's program uh, the connecting oh, scholarship program which i got in 2012 now i got the second one So I have Wonderful. to complete it at turning cost because uh, no, uh, it really I know, matters. I know. No, take your time. Take your time. Maybe fifteen days down the line. It is not the coming Saturday and the other the Saturday. No issues. Yeah. Thank Meanwhile, you. we'll write up the MOU with the department. I'll have more proofs to you know present it well. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Looking forward. Thank to it. Congrats. You. Thumbs up. Thumbs up for <laughs> what you've achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations once again. It's so heartening to hear that efforts are paying yeah. off. Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you all should visit our training and production center, especially for transgender. Other centers are there. Yeah. We have for rural women, uneducated women, and all. Those are regular. They are women. But this is a community where we need, you know, a, a lot more focus, and they are really turning well, uh, shaping the professional, and you know, getting to the mainstream, and uh, trying to be normal. All these are, you know, literally motivating everyone and shaping well action. You are doing something which was considered impossible just a decade ago. Wonderful. <laughs> just got it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, Deepa. Yeah. Uh, Purnima, would you like to uh, track with uh, Shivani and Danu? Hello, hi, Shivani, ma'am. Hello, please don't. Could, could you turn on your? Uh, A video, uh, Purnima, so that they can see you. Next time, Anna. I mean, busy in garden, so. <laughs> okay, okay. Go ahead. Any questions no. you have for Shivani? No, uh, no, no, no. But uh, really, it was like enlightened for me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nothing actually. After listening to you, I I still want to know more. I still want to learn a lot. Hmm? Really good. Thank you so I, much. Deepa, ma'am, congratulations to you. It's really not a uh, easy thing to do. You have done Thank great. Thank you so much. Yeah, Purnima is our director in the NGO. Uh, Deepa, she was. Nice. Uh, she is very active. She also is a social worker in Bangalore. Oh, wow. She participates in a lot of uh, social activities and uh, she had uh, formal so, training so, as well in social work. Nothing in front of you all. <laughs> Uh, please, every step thank counts. You. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Raju, Canada le bekar hai matar pa. Anything you would like to ask? Another uh, ukel bekar unti diya yor na. Priya also. Shivani, you can manage a little bit of. Uh, I I cannot or, or speak, but can I can manage. understand. Both of us can understand. Okay. Great. Raju, another idea na pa. Question in the in the sir, uh, sorry, mobile sorry. Lido, video another on mar ko bekar. Video on mar ko tiya. Just for a short while. Okay, oh. thank you. Thank you for coming, Raju. Uh, thank you, Elba. sir. Yenan Stoninge, your bagay. Sir, na kushi ay to. So you're from Karnataka, Dora, sir. You're from? How do how do? Kodiyala. Under you're Lalan Shivani, maybe from North India, right? I yes, I am from Bombay, <laughs> but yeah, I've okay. been in Bangalore for the past I think one and a half years. So. वर्क नम कर्नाटक अंदर चलाजल स्क्रीन मेल तरफ He lost both his hands. Called Vishwas, mm -hmm. went on to earn gold medals uh, for India in the Paralympics. Wow! Uh, as a swimming champion, so he has done his uh, biofilm, oh, uh, which nice. is yet to be released. 
Yeah. That's so amazing. Congratulations. Raju was the main director for this. That's amazing. It's a huge project. Thank you. Thank you, Raju. So uh, mm-hmm. one of these days, you may have to, you know, uh, travel to uh, our Sh- Shreni Samudaya in Kodiala. Please and uh, Shivani, I'll have your contact. Uh, anu has, uh, my number is there. I mean, Anu's yeah. number is there with me. Yeah, yeah. I can send I would like to have your number as well. Sure, please. Uh, so uh, we will uh, take it forward. Uh, Mansa, I'm... are you there? Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Shivani. This is just an open invitation. Please let us know whenever you want to visit the Kuriala unit. Uh, we'll take right. you. You can take a look and interact with everyone there as well. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Mansa, anything from your side before we wind up? Yes. She's our manager for the NGO. Okay. So that's yeah, the thing was like, you know, uh, it was purely meant for farmers and so on, and the FPOs. Yeah, All I those understand. experts are uh, yeah, basically from the FPO side. So I just thought, you know, these are the, and they are just uh, speakers. They'll have voices, but these people, they'll be showcased in the film as projects, as successful projects. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's an idea. Wonderful. This also will be put on YouTube along with the expert series. We'll put it oh, on great. YouTube. Itself. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. So on that note, I think uh, uh, Shivani, uh, let me thank you for uh, your presentation. Anu, thank you very much uh, for your collaboration. No problem. Yeah. And uh, no, the thing was so like it was so insightful for me. Like I haven't had a lot of stories she told, and it was ins- oh. insightful for me. <laughs> And I was yeah. telling like, dude, you were so amazing. <laughs> These stories. It means Shivani has picked up a lot in one and a half years. Yeah, true. She's almost become a part of it. It appears as if she's been there from the founding times. <laughs> I, <laughs> thank you so much. I should much. tell That's Sudhirji really about that. Uh, Nice. That's really you kind. Thank you all of you for listening to me. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, and this is a great opportunity. I think thank you so much, sir. Uh, for offering nobody i mean people there's a lot of people who listen to us very happily um yeah. very few people who are willing to take action so thank you so much for your um consideration and also active effort that's something that we don't see very often so it's it's really really refreshing thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am have a nice day and uh, to all thank of you. you happy weekend thank you raju <laughs> for uh, coming weekend. thank you thank Deepaji. you for being here thank, thank you, you.